Greetings, and welcome to another discussion about Mac games from the Orient. And I know what you're thinking. You're going, why? Why would you make that the thumbnail? Because if I had to see it, then so do you. Go on, dong. Uh, go dong. We're off to a good start. I'm not sure if there's much I can say about Go that hasn't already been said, seeing as it's one of the oldest unchanged games in existence. It's been played for millennia, and one can still find Kifu and Sumego that are centuries old. For you chess people, that's game records and a rough equivalent to checkmate problems, but we'll get to life and death in a moment. Anyway, there's plenty of material to find, and may have been much more if the four Go houses of Japan didn't keep their tactics and strategy a closely guarded secret like they were actually at war with each other, which... You know, maybe they were. I know what you're thinking, but Tanara, why are you talking about Go if you can't say anything new about it? Well, hypothetical commenter, we're going to talk about Computer Go. Travel back with me to the 90s, or, heaven forbid, the 80s. I wasn't around for the 80s, but as far as I know, there wasn't really centralized servers for playing Go online or programs for accessing them. Cue the comments pouring in telling me there's been servers since the 70s or something. The Smart Go file format, or SGF, did show up in 1987 and is still used today. Far as I know, the Internet Go server was the first, thanks Japan, in 1992, which is now also called PandaNet. Now imagine you're like me currently, and you're the only person you know that's interested in this game of strategy that's way more popular on the other side of the world. Yeah, it's a bit harder to set up a game of the person in the 80s if you don't have a local club, which, even nowadays, all of that's at least a couple of hours away for me. It's easy to find someone to play with nowadays. You have multiple populated servers now, some of which are as simple as pulling up a browser tab. If you don't want to play with people, Go programs are pretty strong nowadays. And that's not counting the supercomputer neural networks like AlphaGo, which beat Lee Sedol, one of the best Go players out there, almost directly leading to his retirement, describing AlphaGo as being, quote, an entity that cannot be defeated, end quote. If that's not a terrifying quote, I don't know what is. Did I mention there's an even stronger AlphaGo Zero now? And its successor, AlphaZero? Yeah, that's a thing. We don't have a chance. But there was a time we didn't bow to our computer overlords. There was a time that, even with computers eventually dominating in games like chess, Go seemed like such an impenetrable game for computers to match a human at, both because of the sheer number of moves and the complexity of strategy. In chess, you have one very simple objective, checkmate the king, and each piece can be assigned an approximate value. The complexity of the game reduces as the game continues, and especially with a good book of openings, a brute force method can work for chess. I'm not saying chess is easy, heavens no, just that it's easier for a computer. The basic rules for Go are very simple, simpler than chess. Black starts, each person places one stone at a time. Stones connect horizontally and vertically. Any set of stones completely surrounded is captured. No repeats of board positions, also known as the co-rule. Despite the simple rules of a 19 by 19 board, the number of possible games of Go exceeds the number of atoms in the universe. Estimated, of course. And while the objective of Go is simple, surround more territory than your opponent, the best way to do this is more complex. It's in the name, at least in Chinese, Wei Qi, which literally means something like game of surrounding. Hell, John H. Conway came up with the concept of surreal numbers because of the Go endgame. Math is weird. But let's get to things as they're important, and perhaps most vitally, not pretend I'm an expert. Now I have a lineup of Mac programs here, but how do we test their strength? There is a ranking system for Go, but rankings are only really loosely useful between different associations and servers, especially at lower levels, where the lowest rank can be anywhere from 18Q to 30Q. Or if you're on Pandanet, they just throw you into a beginner class, only hitting 17Q once you win a few games. And yes, if you're in martial arts, Go uses the same Q and Dan system. One Dan is the equivalent of a mental black belt, and professional ranks go up to nine Dan, like poor Lee Sedol we mentioned earlier, and he's a Korean nine Dan. They're the strictest with their ranks. We could use an ELO system, but I have a better, or at least easier, idea. The procedure will be to run each program against a modern program, in this case many faces of Go, and see what rank it plateaus at. It's not a terribly exact procedure, but then neither are these programs, so hey, it's fine. The main important thing with rankings is that we're consistent. None of these things are going to hit anywhere close to amateur one Dan anyways. For context, I'm anywhere between 20 and 15 Q, depending on where you look, and I've been playing for a few months. 
Started learning it at the end of January. That's not a brag. I'm pretty sure that still makes me a white belt, waiting to be yeeted across the room by a Japanese schoolchild. Mentally. Yeet my brain across the room. And yes, amateur and professional Dan ranks are different. We'll get to that. You see this? Five volumes. Five volumes to take you from new to the game up to the lofty height of about, oh, ten Q. I'm still solidifying volume three in my brain. Our first program is just called Go, made in 1987 by James R. Logan Jr. and published by Infinity Software, and only requires a Macintosh 512KE at minimum. So you can guess how strong this is. Honestly, this one probably has more value as a tutorial and annotation tool than as a challenging computer opponent. Though it does support matches over modem, so there is that. That's cool. Also, despite what the trivia card says, don't actually say Atari during a game. This isn't chess. Also, for being nitpicky, no one's really sure how long Go has been around. Earliest written reference is from the 4th century BC. Legends say it was Chinese Emperor Yao two millennia before that who had his counselor devise the game for his unruly son, and how that went seems to vary depending on who's telling it. The version I heard is that his son dismissed it, disparaging the game by saying whoever plays first wins, and appalled, Yao put said counselor in charge of his troops instead of his son. Which I find hilarious for a reason we'll get to later. Anyway, the program is weaker than it really should be due to one fatal flaw. It has no concept of life and death. As mentioned earlier, stones are captured when completely surrounded, and a group is dead when there's no way to stop that from happening. This program cannot recognize when this has happened, which makes it hilariously persistent. The important phrase here is two eyes is alive. If you have at least two points where the opponent can't play, or enough room to make those two eyes, the group can't be captured, even if completely surrounded otherwise. You now know more about this concept than this program does. You have to remove the dead stones yourself before scoring. Yet, somehow, some way, if you set the thinking time up as high as it will go, it can beat many faces of Go's lowest opponent, 18Q. Sometimes. I'm almost convinced these are flukes. So I guess we can call this 18Q? Maybe? Not sure how much you'll learn playing against this one, though. If you have a basic grasp of tactics, you'll probably crush this thing. To compare, I play against many faces 15Q difficulty much of the time, 12 on a good day, 18 on a bad day. I fluctuate a lot. Gotta love some of these features. Handicap points shown on board. I hope so. Star points are kind of a standard feature of the Go board. Automatic counting of the number of prisoners. Well, I'm glad this thing counts something. Set the computer to look hundreds of moves into the future. <laughs> Serious? It also claims to not be copy protected, despite having copy protection questions. Maybe they were planning a more insidious method? Never mind, let's move on. Let's just be glad this one wasn't released in Japan, or they'd have one more reason to laugh at us. Am I being hard on this one? Maybe a little. At least it has a decent tutorial, but given it got that material straight from the American Go Association, I would hope it does. Luckily, we'd only have to wait two years for a massive improvement, thanks to Bruce Wilcox of Toyogo Inc., who would later go on to work for 3DO and Telltale Games. So, someone with some skill, then. They also made a handheld version, but the few I've seen are going for triple digits. Would be neat, but I'm afraid I'm not testing that one. This is Nemesis Go Master for Mac and IBM PC. Why is it called Nemesis? I don't know, because it sounds cool? It's certainly more of a nemesis than the last program. It claims that it plays at 13Q, but we'll see. Especially since it has all these settings, so it might vary. It has other difficulties, including the completely random 35Q. Except it's actually not completely random. It still somehow has more concept of life and death than our first Go program did. I've played against the other difficulties, and they're pretty easy. Even the 20Q computer does some strange openings sometimes. I mean, look at this. What kind of opening is that? <laughs> I've got this, no problem. One hour later. I lost. Wait, I lost. I'm not supposed to lose. Let me see the script.
Well, now that I've been humiliated by that, let's see how strong this thing actually is. One problem with that, running on a Mac Plus, this is pretty slow. Depending on your settings, one game could take the computer an hour. Or three. Or eight. Not that I'm surprised. Maybe if you have an SE30 or something even faster, it won't be as bad. Maybe this one should have been published by Infinity Software. All jokes aside, though, it is impressive for 1989. I haven't seen a mistake in it figuring out life and death yet, and it does know how to fight. It seems to be able to keep track of eyes and liberties, that is, the number of free spaces around groups of stones. As Patrick Henry said, give me liberties or give me death. Wait. I've seen some moves from it I didn't expect. I've actually learned things watching and playing against Nemesis. But if the game is rather slow, how do we test its strength? I could have a lot of patience. Or I could just crank up CPU speed and mini VMAC. <laughs> you could set the width and depth of the search tree and just how far it searches. The settings are certainly a lot easier to understand than the last program. There's a lot more in the way of analysis features here, too. You can analyze groups for life and death and set up Sumego problems this way. You can analyze openings, annotate and diagram game records, setting up handicap is easier, and there's more features you can glean from the manual. There's a lot here, it's easier to use, and it's stronger. Atari. And, ah, don't say Atari! <laughs> Okay, you know what? It's a program for learning. I get it. But the option to turn it off would be nice. Wait, what? I was distracted by your spouse, Nemesis? What the hell? That must be what the humor option is about. Anyway, yeah, it may actually be as strong as it claims, provided you give it some time to think. Maybe give your stones a good polish while you're waiting, I don't know. That means the program can still be useful up to about 4Q or so because of handicap stones. This is why Go is ranked the way it is. I told you I'd get into it. The weaker player plays black, and if it's just one rank, generally you just reduce White's Comey to a half-point tiebreaker. Now that I think about it, none of these programs have implemented what? Comey yet. Huh. Anyway, since White goes second, they get compensation points. 6.5 under the widely used Japanese rules, but this can vary slightly. Two or more ranks, black puts out a number of stones equal to the rank difference, and white makes the first normal move. So, say I'm 12Q, and I play a 4Q player at the local club. That's eight handicap stones. Now let's say that guy faces an amateur 5 Dan, now that guy takes eight stones, since there's no 0Q rank. Professionals are a bit different. A 1 Dan professional is probably around the level of a 6 or 7 Dan amateur, the highest official amateur rank. There's a slight overlap. Between a 1 Dan and 9 Dan Professional, there's probably 2 or 3 stones difference in strength. At that point, you're getting ranks through wins. I swear, aside from the separate professional ranks, it's very easy to understand. Until you go to servers like Pandanet and Dragon Go. They both have ranks up to 10 Dan. Pandanet has a plus and minus for every rank, adjusting the Komi as well, and Dragon Go granulates the handicap even further than that, and bleh. You know what? They handle that automatically. We're concerned with discrete whole stones here. Just know if I put DDK or SDK in my profile, that's not code talk. Just double digit Q and single digit Q. Side note, you know why they call it Dragon Go? It's a correspondence server, so the games tend to drag on. <sighs> that's a dad joke if I've ever heard one. By the way, remember the legend earlier? Danzu, Yao's son, he wasn't really wrong. Black plays first, and this gives an advantage, hence the introduction of Komidashi. This is hinted at as early as the 19th century, with a story saying that Hanunbo Shusaku, asked about the result of a game, simply replied, I had black. Then Komi rules came about in the 1930s at a lower amount of points, only really standardizing to 6.5 in the early 2000s. 7.5 under Chinese rules, but we get there when we get there. All I'm saying is Yao's unruly son kinda had a point. Anywho, the manual is actually very good at talking about handicap, the rules, basic strategy, how stones connect to each other even when they're not fully adjacent. There's enough here to get you started on the game that you don't need me talking about it, but I wanted an excuse to talk about it, so here we are. It has a blink and you'll miss it mention of Komi, and honestly, I don't really blame them for not implementing it yet, considering the amount wasn't exactly standardized in 1989. So now I've seen what a couple of years and a skilled programmer can do for this, even on the same hardware. Now it's time for Shinsoku Igoju from Systemsoft Corporation in 1997. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, a bit of a leap there. 
The main in-betweens offers things like Quintet, Five Stones, Do Tills Jack. Those are Gomoku programs, which, unless you're playing certain variations, don't use the capture rule at all. It's a Connect 5 game, and the rules vary a bit depending on who you ask. It can be played on pencil and paper, and World Championships exist for it. Albeit they use a more complicated opening to attempt to negate Black's advantage, but that's a whole other topic and people are gonna complain if I try and make this a board game channel. Those are interesting, and they seem like fun little diversions, but we're here to look at Systemsoft's offering, if I can figure out what I'm doing. It's all in Japanese, so I can't read any of it. The manual at least looks like it has a nice tutorial, maybe not on par with Nemesis, but what we want to know is does it have any interesting new features, and how strong is it? Hmm, I hope this runs fine on an English Mac. That's not a great sign. I already couldn't read these options, but now nobody can! Oh boy. Sheep Shaver gave me trouble for unrelated reasons, so I tried Basilisk 2 and, um, okay, it's making moves that don't seem to be appearing on the board? They aren't passes, they're just moves that don't exist. Bizarre. I managed to get a Windows 95 VM going after several restarts. It seemed to be going okay, and then it crashed. I would have said this was the poor thing's way of resigning after losing this group here, but they were still having a really close game. The manual seems to want at least a Power Mac Performa, so maybe running it in Basilisk 2 is just a bad idea. 68k architecture and all. In Sheep Shaver it does work fine, however everything about it seems a little bit... off. The intro video has a large skip in it, and that's not an emulator problem. That happened in the Windows version too. Even if I do like the atmosphere of it. Ah, 90 CG. The graphics, in trying to be realistic looking, are just kind of weird and grainy looking. And no, I don't mean the wood grain. The score uses Comey, but for whatever reason doesn't take prisoners into account. Making Infinity Software's Go almost seem justified in listing that as a selling point. The timer seemed to count on one timer, but then deposit that time into the other timer once turns are switched. I haven't seen any life or death mistakes, but this doesn't exactly inspire confidence. Not to mention most programs that are built for PowerPC have an error message for non-PowerPC computers. In fact, I'm curious. Even with the thinking time up, I haven't seen it beat many faces 15Q opponent. Is... is Nemesis stronger than Shinsoku Igodu? Alright, time to break the rules. It's time for a one-on-one -on -one computer Go Cage match! In this corner, the reigning champion playing Go while still taking glances at your spouse. It's Nemesis! And in this corner, the up-and-coming challenger, the Go player of godly speed, Shinsoku Igodu! Yes, Shinsoku Igodu means something like the path of godlike speed Go, or... perfume. What? And just on the low end of the manual suggested default settings, it fights pretty evenly. Nemesis would win by Komi, in fact. Any higher, and Shinsoku Igodu has no hope. You had eight years on Nemesis, and you just can't beat it. Dang, kudos to Bruce Wilcox, he did a bang-up job with Nemesis. Now, you could argue that Shinsoku Igodu is faster, but is it? Let's find out. Let's run Nemesis in the same emulator, Sheep Shaver, and see what happens. And it's not that much slower. It's a bit faster in the opening, a bit slower during fighting, kinda balances out. Nemesis is somehow still the best program we have so far, and even it starts getting confused with big enough groups, so it's consistently trashed by the 12Q modern computer even when I crank up Nemesis to obscene levels. But at the turn of the 2000s, something different would happen. The open source community poured over to the Mac. Jeremy Harris started this effort in porting New Go to the Mac in 2001, appropriately called Mac New Go, and wrapped up in 2003 by Hideyuki Fujiwara. Jeremy Harris admits their program is a little bit buggy, and it may not be fair to try and measure the strength of a program that may make illegal moves. Like that! It just started cheating because I was winning. By his own admission, it is version 0 0.5 because it's half done. The 2003 version is version 3.2.3 .3, tied to version 3.2 of New Go. Now the real question, do we finally, after over a decade, have a stronger Go program for the Mac? Yeah, we do. It consistently beats many faces 12Q computer opponent. Actually, it's beating 9Q. And 6Q. I haven't seen it beat 3Q at all, but it puts up a good fight. It took almost a decade and a half, but we finally got something to surpass Nemesis on the Mac. 
However, it has less options than Nemesis. There's not even the option to play under Japanese or Chinese rule sets. Main difference being Japanese scores by territory and Chinese goes by area, that is, both surrounded and occupied spaces. Then there's AGA rules, which can go by either because of their rules for past stones, and uh, why is there always exceptions? It's like learning English. Everything is similar, but slightly different. It is open source. Maybe they got other features later. Though NuGo's latest update is in about 2010, but there's other open source projects out there that are definitely much stronger. Still, this is one program I can't seem to beat on its highest level. For now. The rule set used doesn't generally matter much, especially in professional games. I will say, maybe learning under AGA rules is better if you're starting out. Any unsure positions can easily be played out, like, uh... Like this one? Yeah, my modern program marked these four stones in the upper right as alive. I asked around, and everybody I asked said that it's dead unless black really messes something up. Not that it mattered in this game, white the modern program won either way, but still doesn't feel right that a modern program flubbed that. That might be the weirdest thing I've seen so far. Now, it is possible for dual life to happen in some situations, but <laughs> man, that ain't it, chief. It crashed. For older Mac OS X, there's also a program called Gobon, mostly a visual UI for playing games online and against whatever Go engine you wanted to put into it. So that can't really go into the strength comparisons, as that's just going to vary based on what you use. Of course, now it's two decades later. Computers are crushing people in Go, and our last bastion of supremacy against the AI has been compromised. Go. Go has changed. It's no longer about nations, tactics, or titles. It's an endless series of proxy battles fought by algorithms and machines. Go and its consumption of territory has become a well-oiled machine. Go has changed. Deep learning programs carry deep learning moves, use deep learning to Suji. Genetic patterns inside their code enhance and regulate their abilities. Opening control, information control, emotion control, battlefield control. Everything is monitored and kept under control. Go has changed. The age of professionals has become the age of neural networks, all in the name of advancing computers to dominate the Gobon. And he who controls the battlefield controls history. Go has changed. When the battlefield is under total control, Go becomes routine. And you know what? You don't have to beat a computer to enjoy a game. If we had to be the best to enjoy something, well... I wouldn't be making any videos, now would I? I kinda thought, with the Mac as popular as it was in Japan, there would be more programs to look at. Or maybe there is, and it's just all in Japanese and not uploaded. I may never know. I just hope this was of some interest, and maybe, just maybe, stoked some interest in the game of Go itself. This is Tanara Kurinov, signing off. Till next time.